Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. All right, welcome back, everybody. We are talking to a guy who coaches many, many people on their business, their leaders. They could be individuals, just want to up their game. Are you aware of what's going on with your team? Are you aware of the whole situation within your organization? We're going to dig deeper into that today. He is Randy Swain from coachingforrelevance.com. Randy, welcome. How are you doing today? Hey, Steve. It's always good to be here, man. Good to see you again. Yeah, good to have you back. You know, it, this this whole thing started just a, a couple of seconds before we got on because I know that you have a vast uh, aviation background, flying yeah. planes, teaching, and all of that. And I wondered, hey, when you get on a plane, you know, a jet, an airliner, and you're just doing it for pleasure, are you are you aware of what's going on? You know, not to like freak mode or anything, but are you watching? <laughs> yeah. uh, and apparently so. You're always watching. You don't even know you're doing yep. it. And even when you're walking down the street, when I'm driving my car, instead of just looking forward ahead, whether it's in an airplane, a car, working with people or whatever, my awareness is on what's going on. So I can be aware of when unique factors come in that maybe I didn't expect. And am I ready for it? And so that's a key aspect of this whole concept. Yeah. You know, that that there, there it is right there. Are you ready for things that come up? those changes, mm -hmm. you know, where you can, I'm going this way, but I got to pivot a little bit this way, but I need yeah. to do it immediately. Yeah. And, and, and do I know whether I got to move five degrees or 90 degrees, you know, kind of, kind of thing, you know, uh, you know, we, we use the, the flying analogy, but that could be the same way in business where something came up, you're going to make a decision right away. Exactly. And you know, the big thing on this, and you know, that a, a lot of areas that I bring to the table and work in are areas of neuroscience and, you know, uh, a PhD candidate for neuroscience and how do you how do you develop your team? And of course, where I'm bringing my doctorate work is, you know, uh, how, you know, aviation instructors at the professional level need to rethink and reapply what they're doing. And I know some of the things that I mentioned to you is there's an article here that I uh, uh, that I'm including in a 50 page document that I'm working on, not the whole article, but just some of the insights from it, because it's very aligned with that. Mm -hmm. And um but it's very key on aircraft accidents and things of that nature. So it's, uh, but it is, it's something that we all have to be aware of. And as leaders, do we understand how we have to connect with our people a little bit different so that we, so that their brains are in the right place in the right direction and they can adjust on their own when they need to, perhaps when we're not there. And, and, mm -hmm. and that's a whole team synergistic bringing together concept and it's something that a lot of people kind of forget about but there's a whole a, a whole aspect about this brain memory and application and and th you've heard me say this on the show a number of times that if you have somebody on your team that's always going back to their comfort zones they're missing the boat and if mm -hmm. you as the leader are always going back to your comfort zone you're missing the boat. And this gets into the heart of just a couple of good points on that for just a couple of minutes. Am I okay in, in looking at this from parental eyes, like a parent mm -hmm. where, cause what you're just saying is you, you make sure your team is ready to go and they can handle things. And mm -hmm. then you kind of let them go. And it's almost, you know, a parent when, you know, child turns 18, 21, whatever. Now they're going to go off on their own. Mm -hmm. That sounds the same thing. Would you would you say there's a, a similarity there? There's a real similarity to there. And there's one kind of key interest on that too, with what you mm -hmm. just said, because if you think about it, uh, and I love it, uh, um, uh, Dr. Uh, Elam, and I'd have to kind of look at my post to remind myself of his first name, but he's a guy that... Uh, uh, was given a talk and it was very good because it's interesting that if you look at the first 23 astronauts that went into space and NASA of them, 21 of them were the first born children in their families. The other two were the mm -hmm. only born children in their families. And so a lot of times parent, what parents need to be aware of that it's one way how this can come into play with your kids and that is if you have three or four children, Wow! are you connecting with the third and fourth one in a way where they sense you believe in them, where you're not just saying, hey, your older brother does this. Why don't you do that? You know, and, and that kind of stuff. And so that when all, all of them get to the point 
where they go out for their dreams that they're ready for it. And so that's a good, just a little good addition point that you, uh, uh, that goes with what you said, because it is that whole process comes into play with that for sure. Oh my gosh. I mean, great for parents to realize that because how many times I, I think almost every parent would say this, the firstborn, it's like, Oh, I got to take care of, I've never had a kid before, you mm -hmm. know, extra TLC. And then mm -hmm. by the time the you know, third one comes along, yeah, it's all good. Yeah. I got this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of take the, uh, the, the foot off the pedal of the, 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 the parenting gas. Yeah. And you know, a lot of times, and, and it's kind of a dysfunctional way of doing it, but you, there are parents sometimes that will sit there and tell the older one, go take your brothers or sisters to bed or something like that, you know, kind of yeah. thing, instead of connecting with all of them in such a way that they feel that oneness with you yeah. that they're not just somebody behind the scenes here and uh, okay you know that kind of thing uh, all of those are very insidious subtle things but uh you know it 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 uh it, it really comes into play like that and when you're talking about that it's a very key point when you look at you know where in your children was this this person born you know the very first one second one third one fourth one whatever and even with your grandkids, you know, kind of down the road, you know, how are you really interacting with them in such a way that you don't let those dysfunctional things come into play? So you're right. When you talk about with kids, a lot of times, guess what? All of that can come into play with them as well. Wow. No two ways about it. Yeah. Yeah. Like well, how said, does that, that whole thing that we're talking about, how does that translate to the workplace, the organization? You know, does a, does a leader, sometimes not put the focus on some employees, but then on others, let's say, you know, maybe there's a senior manager where, you know, that one got groomed really well. Now we have somebody yeah. new coming in and they're like, yeah. Yeah, 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 you guys take care of that one instead of giving that one personalized attention. Yeah. And you know what? It's interesting because the point about this and it's good for your children, but it's also good for everybody on your team at the workplace. Every mm -hmm. single person is a little bit different. Yeah. You know, are you connecting with them in a way that they are visualizing and exceed and, and, and pursuing their greatest potential in them? And and, you know, it, it's interesting that there was one lady on TV that I was listening. She was being interviewed and uh, and she was talking about her journey, you know, her life journey up to where she is now. And she talked about some ba some bad situations that happened to her earlier in her teenage life. And, uh, and one of the things she, she mentioned, she said, there was a time when everything came unglued in my life. There was a time when I didn't believe anything. And and as I've shared with people before, there was a time when I graduated from high school that that was kind of going on in me, although with her, it was worse, you know, kind of thing. And as a leader, do you have a sense of when one person on your team is feeling like everything mm. just came unglued for them, maybe in their personal life, maybe in their business life. If all I do is I go to and point fingers at them and yell at them and command them and, you know, you better do this. And da, 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 da. If that's your mindset, you're destroying them. You're not helping the team. You're not helping them mm. overcome and get to where they're going. If they have a sense that you're connecting with them in a way, you were talking about the concept of collaboration a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, if you're connecting with them in a way where they have a sense that you understand what they're dealing with, but that you also believe that they can overcome. Guess what? Yeah. There's going to be a time where they go, you know what? Yeah, let's do this. And mm -hmm. now it's all coming from inside with them. And so all of that is aspects about this. Um, does it not? Does that, is that, matter with flight crews yep with teams in any kind of business anywhere yep uh whether it's just business you know doing you know whatever you know kind of thing uh are those factors that a leader needs to be aware of it's not just about you dictating and that's where a lot of people in today's world a lot of managers in today's world that that sort of become narcissistic in a sense they they think that you know, it's my job just to make you dependent on me. So, you know, when I tell you something, you got no other option, you know, kind of thing. No, it's where you come alongside and they believe so much, even with maybe what they're struggling with right now. It may be at home. It may be it may be in the workplace. 
that they can overcome that. And all of a sudden the company goes, wow, wow, look where this guy got to. Wow. I didn't think he'd get there, you know, six weeks ago. That amazes me. Look at this lady over here, man. I would have never thought that she was capable of that. Or they came up with an idea that made the whole company go, boom, yeah, you know, kind of thing. And all of those are aspects that when you're talking about being a leader, you have to understand how to truly connect with your people and also be aware of, are you aware of when their mental aspects, the neuroscience aspects are either shutting them down or they're missing things or whatever. And sometimes when you ask them the right question and they go, oh, wow, you know what? That's a good question. Wow. Yeah. I know what the solution is on that. Let's do this. You know, and, and magical things can happen when you do that sort of stuff as a true leader and not as just kind of a dictatorial person. But guess what? Whether you're talking about your kids, whether you're talking about your grandkids, whether you're talking about your team, you know, whether you're talking about your flight crew, your baseball team or whatever, you know, kind of thing. Those are some of the factors that you got to uh, be aware of. And leaders understand it's not about you just dictating to people, but it's about you coming along and joining them and helping them, not because you're telling them, but sometimes because you ask the great questions and you begin to understand them and they start to believe in you and they start to believe in where they're going and what they're capable of doing. And wow. Yeah. Let's do this. You said that's, something before that's huge. Was, I thought was huge a few moments ago in that mm -hmm. identifying that somebody on your team is having a challenge, whatever yeah. it might be. Yeah. That's fantastic. That it is. You know, however, even more so, this is what I'm getting from you. When mm -hmm. you realize that that person is going through maybe a personal challenge, whatever it might be, that you give them the feeling of confidence that they can overcome it and move forward within their uh, life and also duties at work. Because mm -hmm. you never want to have that. It's great to recognize that they have challenges, but you never want them thinking that, oh, yeah, you know, my boss knows that, you know, I have this thing going on at home and, uh, they're probably going to look at me like I'm busted, you know, that, yeah, that, 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 yeah. you know like the wheels coming off the car and and then I got issues here yeah, and then yeah. I, they're, they're going to lose their confidence. I mean, then I'm going to lose my job blah, 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 and all these thoughts go in your head. But just to say, you know, hey, I realize things are, are going on there, but you're doing a great job and just, you know, I'm here for you. That You, know, you can that get there. And, you, and the other part of it, too, is it's kind of interesting that sometimes and let's face it, sometimes they're going to be dealing something with something that we dealt with at one point in our career. Well, true. And you know what? There's been a, one or two times where I've actually come along with somebody and I said, you know what? I know what you're saying because I had to deal with that one time. And you know what? I got through it. Trust me, if I got through it, you can. And I know you can. Yeah. You got what it takes. And and so, you know, that, that there's an aspect of that that's not just about dictating and or, ordering and threatening, but coming alongside your team and really. And you know what? If you model that as a leader. Let's say that you have, let's just say that you have 15 people on your team that, that report to you. What if, because you modeled that kind of behavior, 12 or 13 of those 15 people adapt, adapted their behavior to do the same thing? And all of a sudden you have mm -hmm. a whole team that even when you're not there, they are doing that yeah. to each other and making each other believe and helping each other and, and coming alongside and working together. You know what? That's synergy. That's that aspect. And that's one of our roles as a leader, for sure. No two ways about it. Do you think that some leaders don't show that compassion for their team because they're afraid of looking vulnerable? Like they're softening up a little bit. Yeah. Let me put it to you this way. If you don't mind me and, and you and I'll both kind of smile on this, I'll bet. But uh, I would rephrase what you said. And I said, are there managers that I think are afraid of that? Yeah. True leaders, true leaders okay. are, not, are not. There's a lot of managers that would sit there and because their focus is I need to show that I'm up here and, and stuff yeah. like that sometimes. Yeah. They're going to kind of be afraid of that. But you know what? True leaders 
understand the real nature of leading and modeling and that, that synergy and that oneness and that teamwork. And, you know, real leaders understand that there is some role in that. Now, are they, do they necessarily do it every time now? Do they necessarily have to give every single detail of everything they, you know, struggled with in their life's journey? No, but they communicate and connect with their people in a way that they go, you know what? I know you felt like you failed in that situation. You know what? I did as well one time in my life. And you know what? I was able to get through it. I was able to mm -hmm. overcome it. You know what? I know you have it within you to do that. I believe in you. And I, and and that's that's huge. But but that's why I say people that their whole mindset is about just dictating and managing and you know controlling and threatening, you know, not so much. They they have that sense of, well, I don't want to do that because it just takes the attention off me or whatever, you know, kind of thing. But true leaders understand the nature of that about how you really get your team overcoming and really reaching radical success. And so that's that's how that's how I would answer that question. I, I knew where you go knowing you, I knew where you're going with that before you even <laughs> finish the sentence. It's like, yeah, let me think of the, the language. Ah, yes. Okay. I think I'll, yeah. I think I'll change the language, but just slightly on it. But yeah, there is that something that leaders and people that are looking to become leaders have to be aware of about that nature of it? Yep. Or do they have to get a sense of how they're going to connect in that way with with the different people in their team? Yep. Do they have to kind of get some thoughts on that? Yep. Sometimes mm -hmm. is that little aspect of of uh, kind of working with them such that it's done before the need for that understanding comes on scene? Maybe, you know, mm -hmm. connecting with them in such a way so that they're prepared for when something kind of seems to, you know, collapse or something. They don't even have to sit down and cry about it because you know what? Yeah. You know what? Yeah. We can, do, we can get beyond this. We can do this. Boom. And they keep going. And so it, it's an aspect that's part of that aspect of developing. If you think about it with, with your team and all, but those are just some key aspects about what you're talking about for sure. How does it feel for you when you work with somebody either, you know, from the aviation level where you, you teach a pilot something new or on the coaching side, when you work with somebody and you can see in their face that they they feel your compassion or they feel your approval that, yeah, you got it. All right. Yeah. You yeah. Feel great, right? Yeah. And you know what? Yeah, you, you, you get a sense where they believe in you and they mm. believe in what you're telling them. And they go, you know mm. what? Yeah. And and I tell you, there's there's uh I've seen people that have failed check rides before in the airplane. And when they find out that the person that gave them their check ride stood there and the person that was flying the airplane with them both said, well, I know what you mean, because you know what? I failed the check ride before or whatever. And they go, what? what? Yeah. Yeah. Really? And to find just yeah. so we all have it, a check ride is? A, a check ride is somebody's certification for a particular airplane, like a Learjet or a, or a, okay. a Challenger or a Gulfstream or something like that, they have to ha they have to undergo what's called a practical test in that airplane, where they have to demonstrate single engine maneuvers and various approaches, and you know all the systems knowledge and and use and all this sort of stuff. But they have to meet standards. You can't retrain anything on a practical test, and so they have to do it. So if there's any wow. single maneuver that does not meet standards, the overall check ride has failed, and and that that can kind of a bite them. And I, I shared, I think this one story with the lady that, that I had to fail uh, one time for one maneuver. And, uh, and I told her, I, I think I shared this with you, but I told her, I said um, that I had already called her uh, or, or her chief pilot had called me uh, and we had a conversation and I told the chief pilot, I said, I want to tell you that she's going to be a good pilot for you. She just had one critical thing at one point. Can it be overcome pretty quickly yeah i think so and i said in my experience of working with her i think that she's also going to be a really good team member for your company and your operation and he mm -hmm. really thanked me for that and i gave her her recheck and all was good and all that but she was just going crazy on herself feeling so beat up because she failed and all this sort of stuff and what was amazing is right after we did the recheck 
where everything was good and she was going to get signed off. We were coming off motion and she was overly apologetic for, um, you know, uh, you know, the frustration she was experiencing earlier and all that kind of stuff. And I told her, I said, I want you to understand something. She said, what? And not even using her name kind of thing. And I said, but uh, I want you to understand something. She said, what? And I said, you don't need to apologize for anything. I, you know, you, you don't need to apologize for one thing. You were just going through a tough moment in your journey. That's all. And you got through it. You, you got there. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and she was just very appreciative. In fact, when it was, uh, when it was all done, she was getting ready to leave. She came up and we just gave each other a quick, uh, brother and sister in aviation hug, you know, kind of thing of appreciation stuff. And, um, but yeah, you know, when you, when you, when you interact with people in a way, that, I mean, I've I've known of some instructors and some examiners that after a check ride, they walk up to the client and they go, well, you know, I kind of gave you to you on this one, you know, you know, kind of thing. And I mean, what that's doing yeah. is trying to pull everybody under your control kind of thing. And they know that. And that's dysfunctional and it's unethical and really not right. Mm. But uh, the way you interact with people that are in a struggle or whatever, you know, kind of thing um uh is 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 key when you're talking about successful leadership and uh like 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 i mentioned that uh, there's been a couple of times in my journey where somebody was almost embarrassed to tell me about something that they had struggled with in their life and i looked at them without missing a boat and i said you know there's, there's been like two times in my whole in my life where i've had to do this but in both times i looked at them and i said well i know what you mean because you know what that was a struggle in my life at one point as well sure and yeah. they, it looked at me and went, really? And I went, yep, I know what you mean, man. I know what you mean. But if I can get there, you can get there. And I, I believe you can. You yeah. know, there and that is. is huge. That That is leading, huge. Leading by example. Yep, uh, it is. That's we're, part we're of just, that modeling. We're just about out of time. I'm, I'm just going to say, when we talk about the check rides, right away, I just have a flashback to the road test, the driving road test. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind yep. of the same thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. You, you're available to help anybody in all different aspects, whether they are leaders, want to be better leaders, managers, or just, you know, individuals who want to up their game. Coachingforrelevance.com yep. is the, the website. And, and they uh, and they can go to my website and get my contact information on them. I, as sure. I tell people, I've shared it on the show before. I don't do cold calls. So, you know, you're not going to get a sales pitch. If somebody calls me and they need something, yeah, we'll talk about it. And, uh, but, uh, but you don't have to feel like you're going to get a real big sales initiative from me uh, unless you need something and you want me to do something kind of thing. So it'll be getting to know people and and uh, getting getting a sense of uh, what they're wanting to accomplish. And and by the way, Randy might call you from 15,000 feet up. You never know. <laughs> that's right. That's <laughs> right. Happen. You know what? You never know. You yeah. Never know. So, yeah, that's a, that's the fun of it for sure. Randy, always great having you on. I, I appreciate you and, and all the insight and all your experience. And I uh, look forward next time we talk. Sounds good, Steve. Listen, you have a good one. I appreciate it. You too. We'll be right okay. back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes. 
and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay. 